So yeah, let's keep going. All right, so what will we be covering? First, when you're doing marketing, you have to determine where is your market? Where are you trying to get your clients from? All right, next, you're gonna to wanna to create a successful marketing plan. When you're marketing, what are you trying to achieve? All right. I'm also gonna show you types of marketing and different platforms that we have. And then after that, we're gonna assume you went ahead and marketed and now you're setting up the deal to sell, all right? And then you're gonna learn how to do an effective close with your clients. All right, so where is your market? Who are you trying to target? So Charles Lee once said this in a presentation and I watched all of his videos. So this one really stuck to me. Um, he went down and broke it basically into three different markets. So the first market you always want to consider are your close family and friends, all right? They're going to be your hot market because you have easy access to them. Anytime you post, you know, tell somebody, hey, I'm a travel agent and their family and friends, you have a better chance of getting them because they know who you are, right? Next one is going to be warm market. That's going to be your Facebook, your LinkedIn, anything like that. Those people that are considered friends on Facebook obviously probably are not real friends or some of them may be. Um, those are very in close access because they can see your constant posting, right? And then after that, of course, you have the cold market, which is the rest of the world. So when you're starting to do your marketing, I want you guys to consider, okay, if I'm marketing Disney, who am I trying to target? Who do I know that likes Disney? What do I know that they like, right? Now, of course, you don't want to target all of your friends and family and you know, constantly bother them with the different deals. But the idea is, is that when you're creating a marketing idea, you want to have an objective to it. You want to make sure that you're hitting the, that market that you're going for, right? So for example, my brother and a lot of my other friends too loved going to Vegas. That's just a hot area for them because they like the casinos. They like to gamble. So when I first about started building my niche, that was where I started at was because Las Vegas was a popular hit for me. So that's kind of where it went off to. That was my heart market. All right. And then I started making, you know, posts about it and I'm starting to tell people about it. That was hitting my warm market. Right. And then when I started going further from there and starting reaching out to people, that would have been the cold market. So everything that I'm doing when I'm making an ad or I'm sharing a post or something like that, it always has an objective of who I'm trying to reach when I'm doing that. Sometimes you're not even trying to close a deal. Sometimes you're just trying to make sure that you're getting enough likes on your Facebook or you're trying to promote your website or you're maybe trying to grow your LinkedIn. When you're doing that, think about what you're targeting. Think about what you're posting. You're not going to get a lot of likes if you're just posting pictures all day of different locations. That's not going to serve a purpose for them. They need to know what to do when they see it, right? So if I wanted to get my friends to like something on Facebook, then I'm going to promote what I want them to like. I'm not going to promote a picture of what, I don't know, the Maldives, for example. That's, they're not going to know what to do with that. Okay. So that's why I want you guys to understand. This is an example of what I'm talking about. All right. So we have types of marketing and platforms. So when you're considering marketing and you're starting off, I want you to focus on three main handles. Okay. Those three main handles can depend on you yourself of what you use, or maybe what how many followers you have on each one. Okay, so my three main handles, for example, are going to be Facebook, LinkedIn, and sometimes it depends. It's mostly Instagram, but sometimes that can be a switch between YouTube. But those are my three that I'm going to post on. I've also started working more on TikTok, so that one might join it. But with those three main handles, when I'm posting, I automatically make sure I post those three areas because they're going to have the hottest, you know, um, I don't know, I guess say market or the reach, the furthest reach and stuff like that. Give me one second, guys. <laughs> Hold on. Somebody's knocking on my door. Kids, right? All right. So, oh. 
next thing you want to consider is how are you marketing on each one? So these are the different types of marketing social media wise, right? We've got ads, we've got flyers, we've got mock bookings, which are shown on the right, and we have video, okay? Now, ads can be something similar as 30% off on a Virgin Voyage cruise, okay? Flyers, they can kind of look like this, or they can just be about your business. That's fine, too. Um, we do have, you know, digital business cards, so that can be considered a flyer that you're posting when you're talking to people. Um, mock bookings, this is one right here, right? So... When you're taking a look at this, what do I want them to do? I want them to book a trip in Cancun, right? So when I'm trying to do that, I'm going to sell the most popular places of that area. I want to basically sell it, right? So for example, in the background, that's the picture of the resort. Um, on the right-hand side, I guess you would say, um, is the spa. And then they have the restaurant. They have a kid's area. And then that's the picture of the bedroom that I'm actually putting with this package and you can see it looks out to the beach. So six night stay in a five star resort, in room champagne breakfast, kids stay free, airfare and transfer included. Starting like this right here, this is how I'm marketing. This is what I'm telling them. This is what I want them to know about it, right? I want it to sound like a really good deal. So trans, uh, travel protection included, all inclusive resort perks and discounts. I put some of the discounts on there, the 25% spa discount that it's beachfront and it's all inclusive. So this is, when I see this, this is objective marketing because I want them to book in Cancun. This is what I'm going for, right? I want you to do that with everything that you're marketing, essentially. This is gonna get you the results that you're going for. If I just posted a picture of Cancun and said explore Cancun, they're not gonna know what to do with that. They're not gonna know what's in Cancun. Okay, great, a picture, they're not gonna serve any purpose, right? So, <coughs> hold on, let me get some water. All right, so create a successful marketing plan. Um, make it a, like a strategic objective. So when you're starting to do your marketing, consider what are you trying to sell for the rest of the year, all right? Now we know how commission works, right? You get paid out and when you're getting paid out, you wanna set it up for the next couple of months. I don't want you trying to sit here and yes, you can book something in March of next year. That's great, but that's not gonna help you probably till May of next year. So you wanna start marketing something that you can close now to help you in the next couple of months, okay? So when I'm doing my marketing, let me see, hold on. Oh, it's not gonna let me, hold on, let me go through it. When we go back to here on this right here, when I'm marketing this, please note that this was, I think this was in July. So this would have happened in July or maybe it happened in our, on August. I'm not gonna market this for next year of 2023 because that's not gonna help me now. I need something to help me right now, right? So for example, right now, what's going on? We've got Halloween, we've got Thanksgiving coming up, we've got fall break coming up, we've got Christmas, New Year's. That's what you're going for, right? Think about the times when people can take off work. Think about the people that may have kids. Think about people's anniversaries that are coming up. Something like that is what you're gonna to wanna to put out when you're doing the marketing. Because if I market for a cruise that's happening next year, like I said, it's not going to help you, okay? So when you're taking a look at this, what do you want the people to do? And that's what I was talking about earlier. Do you want them to book? Do you want them to follow your page? Do you want them to like it? Do you want them to spread the word? And by spreading the word, I mean talk about your business. There's different ways to do that, but you have to consider what you're putting out there, okay? Next, <laughs> um, Pick your suppliers to market, okay? I don't want you hopping in back and forth between six different suppliers. Wherever you find your most deals at, go for it. For example, when I'm booking, I say I'm marketing a resort, the supplier that I'm going to go to for those resorts are probably going to be either be Vax, Profit Agility, and maybe Expedia. But that's what I'm going to stick with, right? Whatever's easiest for you to work with, market those suppliers, right? Don't make the marketing harder than it has to be. A lot of people struggle with mock bookings. There's a training for that. If you need help with the mock booking, I'm doing one next week, I believe. You can hop on then. But you shouldn't be spending too much time trying to figure out what you're marketing. Make a plan for it. Make a setup. Set it up for the next couple of days, okay? Now, we always follow, of course, the four, 
the 421 process. So the 421 process is four about travel, two about yourself, and then one hard sell. Okay. You need me to repeat that? You got it? You good? You want me to say it again? Yes. Okay. Okay. Because I saw your face and I was like, wait, I don't think she got it. All right. 421. Okay. So 421. Four post about travel, two post about yourself. And then one post, which is going to be your mock booking, which will be a hard sell. All right. Four posts about travel. Tell them about a travel update. Tell them about, you know, the vaccination stopped on Carnival Cruise or the requirement. Like that's big, right? Start that into a marketing somehow. All right. Um, I do travel tips a lot. People really like that. Why am I sharing it? Because I want people to follow and like my page. I want to spread the word about my business. That's the objective there, right? With those travel posts, all right? Two about myself. I want people to be able to feel like they can relate to me. When I'm talking about my trips, I want people to see what they can experience when they go here and here. Another objective, I'm making it personable. I'm not making it all about business, which really helps, right? And it's spreading the word that, hey, Ashley took this trip here. That would be a really cool trip for me to take. That's where I'm going for, okay? And then <clears throat> the one, of course, is that hard sell that I just showed you guys. You can make it into a video. You can make it into a flyer. It's not too hard to make. At first it is. But when you're doing those, I want you to consider, okay, when I'm doing mine, I'm going to do mine for Las Vegas, for example. Who am I trying to target? My niche is Las Vegas. People know me for Las Vegas. So that's what I'm going to go with, right? Don't make it harder on yourself and sitting here going, okay, do I want to market this? Do I want to market that? Stick to what you're doing, <clears throat> all right? Last one, analytics, testing the plan, okay? When you're testing this plan, you have to give it at least 90 days. That's the average solution for this, all right? You don't have to do 90, I would say at least 60, but stick to what you're doing because the most important part of marketing is consistency. If you're not consistently posting the same thing, People get lost. People forget that you're there. But when they constantly see you, constantly see you, it's going to pop in their minds. For example, I have a friend that I haven't talked to in years. I used to work with. We weren't even friends. I just worked with her. But she seen me consistently posting, consistently posting. One day, out of the blue, hey, can you plan my trip? I'm going to uh, the Smoky Mountains in a couple of months. Yeah, sure. Of course. That's what I'm talking about, consistent marketing. That's what it gets you. Okay. Now, when you're marketing onto other pages, because we do market onto groups, don't be afraid to reach out to them. That's a big thing. When you're reaching out to them, let them know, hey, I've done this, this, this. Hey, I could book this for you. That's the whole point, right? When they see your post and they see your deals, they're going to start liking your page. When I first started, guys, I had 150 friends on Facebook. I have almost 400 now, and I've only been doing this for three months. That's because I'm marketing. That's because I'm networking. You have to be not afraid to break out of your shell because that's what's going to hurt you when you're coming to your marketing. If you're afraid to tell them, hey, oh, this is what I got. Just show them the deal. If you show them the deal, they will come to you because everybody travels, right? So now we did our little marketing. We figured out, let's say we did the Cancun deal, right? So you need to set up the deal to sell, okay? You can post quotes in hard sells and mock bookings all day long. But if you're not setting yourself up to properly seal the deal and sell it, it's not going to work. First of all, you want to position yourself as an expert. Okay. I want you to do all the research you can about this, this resort in Cancun. I want you to sit here and figure out, oh, they have champagne in the, in the room for breakfast. You know, maybe the couple say, I don't know, they want to have a re relaxing romantic vacation. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna sell the spa services to them. I want them to know about those spa services. I want you to position yourself as, oh, when you arrive here, you know, this is what it's gonna look like, things like that, okay? So when you're delivering your quote, don't send them a text message. Oh dear God, do not send them a text message, do not email them. Unless you've already talked to them in the process that you're sending them the quote, don't do that. Let me tell you why. When you send to somebody a text message or an email, do you know what they do? Somebody give me a guess. I want to know what they do when they when you send them an email. What do you think they're going to do? They trash it. 
mm, not trash. Yeah, either, no either that or um, go to Google themselves and try yes. to um, get a better deal. That's right. That's exactly what they're <laughs> about to do. Don't do that. Unless you're 100% sure. How do I bring the volume up on the iPad? Dear God. I can hear you guys, but I can't hear you long. Oh, I found this. We got to do it. Now I can Yes, that's exactly what they're about to do. Then you'd also be running with the chance of ending up in their spam as well. But as soon as they receive that email, the first thing they're about to do is go Google the prices to see if they can find the same deal themselves. We don't want that. We want to avoid that at all costs. At all costs. So what I advise and what I have done in the past, which has worked, is calling the client. All right. Get them on the phone. You can still send the email and the text while you're on the phone. But don't do it until you're on the phone because I don't want them to just open it. I want them to go, okay, hey, let me show you what you're getting, right? So you're going to go to Cancun for a week. And when you get there, it's going to look like this, this, this. It's going to have the champagne in the room. You're going to get 25% on your spa services. I'm selling them the package. I'm sure you guys can see that, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Illustrate. Illustrate that you've met their needs. I've had one client that I was booking for and he had a leg problem and he couldn't sit properly on the airplane. He needed an out, like a seat outside. So one thing I made sure was that he was able to pick a seat when he got onto the flight. Now that seems like something small, but to a client that's huge. So pay attention to what your client is requesting. If, okay, what is that? Hold on. I don't know. Is that me? It might be me. There you go. All right. So find out what your client is requesting. And when you're selling them that quote, make sure that you let them know that that need has been met. So for example, all right, sir, uh, when booking your flight, I went ahead and made sure that you have flexible seating. So you're able to pick where you can sit as well. You know, you booked it at, let's say a business plus or business seat or not economy, right? Whatever else is other. And therefore you have the first onboarding. Those two things were important to that client, right? So that's what I want you to do. When somebody tells you, oh, we're going, you know, I don't know, going on an anniversary and we want it to be really romantic. Okay, well that champagne in the room probably would have helped. Okay? Now as well, mirror your client, stick to, the, to their pace because I, and I wrote this for me, not for you guys. I talk really fast. When I get excited about something and I get going, I really get going and I have to tell myself, okay, wait a minute. The client doesn't talk as fast as me. The, the client is, is not, I don't know, not pacing like me because I have ADHD. So I have to stick to their pace and I have to slow down and I have to make sure that I go over every single detail. And maybe I have to go over it a few times for them to understand what the deal they're getting and use the same words. If they're saying I need to rent a large SUV, then Use that same word because in their head, it's clicking. Okay, she met that need. That's done. That's taken care of. Don't try to make it over like, I rented you a luxury car doing this, this, this. No, I got you that big SUV. It's going to transfer you from the airport to your hotel. Like match their same words. If they're walking, looking for a romantic resort, when you call them and you're delivering your resort, I found you the most romantic resort on the island. I found this. Find, set that up so that they think, okay, she's really listening to me because that's the biggest part of our job is to listen to our client so we can deliver what they want, right? Next part, paint a picture, okay? This really helps if you're selling a place that you've already been to. So the girl that's going to the Smoky Mountains, I've already been to the Smoky Mountains. I love the Smoky Mountains. It's a great place to do vacations. And then it was easy for me to position myself as an export because I've been there and I said, hey, you know, like, I love the Smoky Mountains. You should check out Dollywood. You know, Dollywood's really cool. The kids would love that. They have the aquarium there. That is selling the picture. That's painting her vacation for her. So she already knows she has something to look forward to. And she knows as well that I'm the expert. So she's going to put her trust in me to book the best vacation. That's what we're doing here. Right? We're creating memories for other people. And we're the experts. If you're in a position where you don't know nothing about this place, look it up. Do your due diligence, take time out of your day to find everything that this offer for this resort that they're going to, so that when you're delivering it to them, that they're so overwhelmed with all of the great things that they have, 
that they're not going to even have time to Google it, that they're going to want to book it is what I'm going for. Okay. Like I said, take them on vacation in their mind, paint the picture of what the place looks like when they walk in the door. If you have to tell them what they're going to experience. Okay. So next delivering an effective close. Now there's four different types of closing a deal. All right. First one, always assume that they want the deal because they reached out to you to do this deal. All right. Don't ask if they want it. Oh my God. That you want to kill a cell? Ask them, does that sound good to you? No, 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 no. Oh, nope. That's it. Once you say those words, the deal's done. It's over. They're going to go, oh, yeah, we'll let you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you. No, no, no. Next question. How would you like to pay? How would you like to book this? Let, you want to you go ahead and book it now? Because you need to book it now because the flights are going to get more expensive. Close the deal. Don't ask them what, how, or when they want to do it. Ask them how. What credit card would you like to book this on today? How would you like to take care of this deposit? Okay. Choice. <clears throat> if you're presenting a quote that has several different options, pick out the two most luxury options that is in their budget and then go, what, okay, so you want to go ahead and book, what room would you like to book? The ocean or the pool view? The pool view, right? Are you looking for a balcony in your cruise? Okay. Well, we have this option and I have this one. Which one would you like to book? Okay. How do you want to take care of that deposit? You see, I'm not giving them an option to go look at something else. I'm giving them, this is what we're doing right now. You have to set the tone for the customer and you don't want that customer to overwalk you. So if they're going to sit here and they're like, okay, what about this? What about this? Okay, that's fine. We can address it, right? But make sure that you're still in control of that phone call because it can go very opposite. And I've had a lot of experience in sales. So trust me on that one, All right? Next one, suggestion. Remember earlier, guys, I was telling you about making yourself the expert. And when I was, when I would go to close that deal with the Smoky Mountains, I would say, you know what? I've been here before and I think this is the best option for your budget. How would you like to book? Or maybe I've done all the research and I found that this is the best option for you. How would you like to book? That is still not presenting the, let's go back and look at it. No, 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 no. All right. Urgency close. Last one. Put this one in every one of your closings. Okay. I cannot promise that this price will be here for long. If you were booking a flight, those prices change sometimes by the hour, okay? So when you're presenting your quote, make sure you let them know that these prices might not be good after 24 hours. Sometimes you get on a certain vendor and you can reserve it and hold it. Um, I believe, I'm not sure which one does it. A few of them do it, but there's certain ones and even cruises will do it, but even then, you don't want to give them a 24-hour decision. You don't want to tell them that. I, oh, yeah, I got a hell for you for 24 hours. No, 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 no. That's between you and the vendor, okay? Hey, these prices can change within a few hours. Now, let me tell you how I know this happens. My first booking that I did was for somebody who was not tech savvy, and I kept talking to her and telling her, hey, the prices are $700 for the flights. An hour later, hey, those prices are now $800 for the flight. When I finally got done to her to do the booking, oh, look, my own agent is calling me that right now. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, let me go back to what we we're doing. The joy of doing this on your iPad. Um, so when it got time to do the actual booking, which was like a few hours later, her prices total was nine hundred and thirty-two dollars for the flights. That if she would have booked a few hours earlier, she would have saved a lot of money. And it wasn't just the flight alone. Also, the hotel prices were changing too. I, I don't know why, but every time I kept going back to Expedia Tap, it kept going up, kept going up. I'm like, ma'am, you have to close, like you have to book it. And then when I finally explained it to her, I got her on the phone. I said, girl, hold on. Hey, I'm in a Zoom meeting right now. Do you want to call me right back? Yeah. All right, sorry about that. Persistent, give it up. So when it got down to it, yeah, it was way more. So make sure that you put in that urgency close that in every single closing that you're doing, right? So guys, what questions do you have for me? If you have any, let's go. Cause this, that's, that's really all it is. I mean, it's not too hard to do, you know? Um, but does anybody have any questions for me? Quick question. Can you please repeat the four, two, one? I didn't sure. have my pen and paper ready. Yeah, Sorry. absolutely. Absolutely. 
So a four two one process is going to be um, going to be four posts about travel, and that can be anything from travel memes, the best beaches. Um, let's see. I just sometimes I do a bucket list um, updates about COVID or certain like places that they can vacay. Um, and then two posts about yourself. Actually, you know what? Instead of me just telling you, how about I show you? I'm gonna show, I'm gonna, let me show you guys. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Let me find my Facebook. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. All right, cool. So I haven't figured out this whole thing yet. Okay, so this is my business page, all right, guys? This is just Facebook. So what I mean, come on. Oh, I just, iPad is so different. All right. Come on, can you come now? So two posts about yourself, right? And those two posts are gonna be essentially like what I'm trying to show you. It may be a trip that you've taken in the past or maybe, I don't know, something that you wanted to go and do. Um, just talk about yourself, talk about your business, talk about how you love what you do, things like that, right? And then that one hard sell, there we go. All right, so these are those branch up posts that I was talking to you guys about. When you see this, what do you what do you wanna do with this? They're, I don't know, branch up drives me crazy, but I don't know what to do with this. When I see this on my page, look, somebody actually liked it. What the hell, all right. Um, here's a fabulous beach. There's nothing I can do with that. That's why they make me angry, but we'll continue. All right. So here's one for you guys. This is one I made the other night. Um, one of my favorite parts of a cruise, dinner time. Here's a video of some of the activities that they do at dinner. Okay. So for example, this guy dancing during dinner. I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise, but that's something that they do. It's funny. People like it. But if you look at the bottom, Last day to get your carnival cruise rate starting at 129 per person. Contact me for details. So I made that post about myself, but I'm still selling. So what was my objective here? Obviously to get people to know about carnival cruise and the deal that they're having, but I shared it through myself. You see how I did that? Another important thing, guys, see all those hashtags at the bottom of it? Hashtags are so important on social media. Hashtags are what get you the views. So anytime that I do something, I put a hashtag on it. Anything that you can possibly think of, cruise, carnival, savings, carnival cruise, travel, always travel, make sure travel's in there. Cruise vacation, cruise life, party time, vacation, something like that, because it gets you the views that you're looking for, right? 44 people reached, all right? I only have 64 people actually on my Facebook, so I know that half those people weren't from my Facebook because they're friends. So no, 44 people reached, six views and one share. I didn't share that. So do you get where I'm going with this? This is how it's done, right? So I don't know what that crap is. Here's my hard sell or not maybe, this would be a travel post, not a hard sell, but this is something that Carnival makes themselves. I don't do this. I don't, I don't have time to sit here and look up tons of deals, right? Flash sell starts, it's a, it was a 72 hour flash sell that I got from Carnival's website, right? So this deal, you know, found a great minute, a great last minute deal instead of the usually high prices, blah, 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 right? Terms and conditions apply, available for select cruises. There you go, that's a travel post. It's not a hard sell because it doesn't have an actual price, but it does, but it doesn't. It, it's hard to explain. A hard sell for me would be like, let me see. I should have one somewhere. And half of my page is taken up by Rancho. I know I can't be the only one annoyed by that. It drives me crazy. Look, here's a post, you guys. Hope is not a dream, but making reality, okay? I made this one on Ripple. That's a good one that's about me. This is this will qualify for about me, a quote. Something like that on Ripple. You can literally go on Ripple and make them right there. You don't have to do anything. That's good, good enough for a post about me or a post about just in general. It's creating traffic on my page. All right, here we go. This is my hard sell. What happens in Vegas? I did this, guys, the other day. I actually have a recording of how I did this. So if you're interested, I can post it. Um, what happens in Vegas? Remember I told you I want to market for the next couple of months, right? Halloween special. That's the next holiday coming up. Market for it. 
starting at 714 a person, airfare and transfer included, five nights, six day, and then I sold it. The rest of this resort comes with nine restaurants, poolside bar, hot tub, activities and shows. Take a spin this Halloween because it's a casino, all right? So here's that same flyer that I used for Cancun. All I did was transfer it. Don't make it harder on yourself. Once you have a template set up, and I can actually share this template to you, once you have a template set up, don't make it harder. Fill in the blanks, keep going, all right? So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I don't really post like their Labor Day. I don't really post much, or I shared that one twice, nice. But you guys get the idea. So when it comes to branch up, let me show you this one too. This is really good to use on other pages. Save you the time of trying to create something for Virgin Voyages. Now, Virgin Voyages, one thing that I like about them is that they're adults only. So that's a big hit. When somebody tells me I want to go on a cruise and they're going with their boyfriend, husband, whatever, Virgin Voyages, right there. No kids, go have a romantic party, lip, whatever, right? So I would take this. I would literally just copy it like this. Or I don't know if I can do it on my tablet. Yep. Copy it. And I would snap this picture. I would click on this link right here. And now think about this link, guys. You have to be careful. When you click more information, I think it's going to open into an app. But sometimes it shows up blank. So be careful about that. If, it's, if you see that, then don't obviously copy it. Just copy this right here. But as you can see, my name's up here on the top. So all I have to do is share the information, right? So I would share this to LinkedIn. I would share this to Instagram. Take the marketing part out. Don't make it harder on yourself. All right. You can share branch up. It's okay. So, all right. Anyways, anybody else got any other questions? Look, there's a little motivation P to post that works. Does anybody else any did anybody else have any questions? Because I can ramble for hours now. Oh wait, there's chat people. Hold on. Oh. I, I just wanted to know about the 421. Is that a daily oh, or a weekly? Um, this is weekly. So uh, this would definitely be weekly. This is what I would suggest for weekly. Um, 421, uh, I wish I had, I don't know if I have it on here. I have a photo from a training and I can show you exactly what it looks like. So plan that around your week. If you can't get to all four to ones, that's okay. Um, I have some people that mostly just do it during the week and they don't post on the weekends. That's perfectly fine as well. But you do, of course, have options, you know, of when you want to post. You can also use apps like Planable. I don't know if you guys have heard of Planable, but Planable is a really good app because it actually plans out your week. So if you want to go ahead and start posting, you can set it all up on Planable and it will go out automatically and you don't have to worry about it. So any other questions? That would be a great template. Oh, oh yeah, Rhonda, I can send it to you if you want it. I have it on Canva. It's honestly, the get the best templates 